Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Now, Dr. Leo is here. Now, there's a lot of misinformation out here concerning kidney disease. And you wonder what you should eat and what you should avoid if at all you have a kidney problem or if you are intending to prevent yourself from getting into kidney disease. Now, we've all heard about the saying that too much protein, and I'm putting that too much in quotes, too much protein consumption will deal or will cause you kidney failure or kidney disease. You've also heard about salt. So there's a lot of misconception around kidney disease and the health of the kidney. And in this video, we are going to try and raise concerns and also educate you on the causes of kidney failure. Coming up. Now here are some or the major causes of kidney failure or kidney disease. Those who have polycystic kidney disease are also going to benefit from this video because they go hand in hand. The causes and the management of kidney disease and the polycystic kidney disease are the same. So number one on the list is chronic hyperglycemia, which basically means a prolonged increase in blood sugar levels. Now we all know that blood, uh, high blood sugar levels destroy the nephrons in the kidney. And nephrons are the functional uh, cells or functional units of the kidney. They perform all the kidney functions. And therefore, if you start altering the functions of the kidney at the nephron level, then generally you are affecting your kidneys. So sugar destroys nephrons. And that's the reason why diabetic patients go through a condition that is called diabetic nephropathy. Just to mean destruction of the functional unit of the kidney, which is called the nephron. Okay. Now, if you want to get out of it, or if you want to prevent this, then definitely you have to lower your carbohydrate intake because the carbohydrate intake is the one that takes blood glucose levels to a higher level. And chronic consumption of dietary carbohydrates will again lead to chronic elevated blood sugar levels. And this will cause you kidney problems. Number two on the list, chronic elevated blood insulin levels. So prolonged hyperinsulinemia is number two reason or number two cause of a chronic kidney disease or kidney disease in general, be it acute kidney disease or chronic kidney disease. Now, unfortunately, drugs that are used to treat diabetes, they either increase production of insulin or increase sensitivity of insulin to the cells. So that once it is when the cells are sensitive, then this insulin can assist in pumping this blood sugar into the cells for it to be utilized as energy. Now, if the cells have undergone cycle and a process called insulin resistance because of excess intake of carbohydrates, then definitely you start having rising amounts of insulin in the system. And this is also associated to this drugs that we use for uh, management of diabetes because they're supposed to increase your insulin levels. So definitely once they increase pancreatic production of insulin or once they raise sensitivity of insulin in blood or in the cells, then definitely that production of insulin from the pancreas causes a hyperinsulinemia. So if you're using these drugs for a long period of time, then that means you'll have chronic hyperinsulinemia. We talked about hyperinsulinemia and its effect in some video in, on this channel. However, we will remind you that hyperinsulinemia is also a cause of kidney uh, failure. So if you continue consuming carbohydrates over a long period of time and the drugs for diabetes, then definitely you get into hyperinsulinemia and that will cause a kidney problem. And how does it do that? High insulin levels cause water retention and sodium retention in the kidneys. So they do not excrete excess water, they do not excrete salt, they absorb it actually. And once they do that, then you get into a situation that is called edema. So you start those swelling feet, that swelling face and the fingers. Again, this uh, water that is being reabsorbed causes an expansion or an increase in blood volume. And this uh, causes high blood pressure. Now you've heard about how salt uh, can cause you high blood pressure. This is the concept. So nobody has ever mentioned about the hyperinsulinemia, which is the cause of retention of sodium. So you can imagine if you're consuming carbohydrates 
you already have your insulin high so your kidneys are not excreting salt and water so what happens when you go ahead and eat a meal that has salt or when you add salt to your diet then you'll be causing a lot of water retention and that is the reason why you have an elevated blood pressure and therefore it's only right that we stop telling patients that salt causes high blood pressure or salt will exacerbate high blood pressure because that is not true the truth is consumption of sugar which will cause hyperinsulinemia which will cause retention of sodium and retention of water from the kidneys is the cause of high blood pressure okay or hypertension so sugar is the issue salt is not the issue number 3 on the list of the things that cause you a kidney problem is uncontrolled blood pressure or uncontrolled elevated blood pressure now if you do not control blood pressure but remember also blood pressure is controlled by the kidney one of the functions of the kidney is to control blood pressure at the end of this video we will try and mention the functions of the kidney so that you relate if you get a kidney problem then these functions will be altered and therefore the conditions that will come as an aftermath of destroying these functions or inhibiting these functions so high blood pressure can be caused by several factors okay however if your blood pressure is always elevated then chances of you rupturing those blood vessels in the kidney are very high okay and once you rupture those blood vessels in the kidney then definitely automatically you start affecting kidney function okay and also this is related to uh, the hyperinsulinemia which basically means the absorption or retention of water and sodium so once you increase that blood pressure then you start affecting your kidney tubules and that is a problem to you number 4 on that list has to be NSAIDs now NSAIDs are those pain killers that you use all the time you buy them over the counter examples are ibuprofen diclofenac meloxicam naproxen all these drugs even the coxib celecoxib and rofecoxib these are the drugs that are called NSAIDs to mean non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs now these drugs reduce renal perfusion okay so once you reduce the blood flow towards the kidneys then automatically the kidney does not receive nutrients and therefore the ability of the kidney to filter blood starts being inhibited and once you do that then automatically you start affecting the function of the kidney so those drugs i understand that most doctors or some doctors advise you to take those drugs when you have pain when you have inflammation people who have arthritis most ladies who have hormonal contraceptives experience migraines all the time every day and every other day and they are tempted to buy packs of these NSAIDs your your home pharmacy we call it a home pharmacy because most of you have a pharmacy in the house you have drugs like diclofenac you have those ibuprofen all these pain killers are a you aim to kill your migraines or your headaches those who have arthritis know that you have all these pain killers and you use them for a long period of time but what you don't know is you are affecting the perfusion of the kidneys and therefore you start killing your kidneys so yes you might start recovering from arthritis because you've cleared the pain but not the arthritis and end up again getting a kidney problem so you're not solving the issue actually the best therapy is in what you eat and not in treatment of the symptoms we've said that here over and over again now number 6 on this number 5 sorry has to be tobacco intake now whether smoking whether uh, sniffing or whether chewing tobacco tobacco produces molecules that are highly inflammatory to your whole system they cause systemic inflammation and therefore tobacco is uh, implicated in lung disease the COPD tobacco is implicated in heart disease uh, the atherosclerosis tobacco is in all inflammatory conditions that you go through because of systemic inflammation and these molecules hurt your kidneys directly they cause inflammation in the kidneys and therefore you get into acute kidney injury and as it progresses you get into chronic kidney disease and that is a kidney failure so you start going for those dialysis and they are very expensive so if you are on tobacco use in any form start tapering that down start winning it down slowly and get rid of that thing completely tobacco is harmful to your health it is actually implicated in more than 90% of health conditions so avoid tobacco by all means number 6 alcohol 
chronic alcohol intake and excessive alcohol intake for that matter. Now alcohol, apart from it causing inflammation like uh, pancreatitis, like gastritis, alcohol, first of all, it's estrogenic and therefore it will cause you an addition of weight. Now once you get into weight addition, that fat is highly estrogenic, so you'll keep on adding weight. Then again, you will start getting into insulin resistance and therefore hyperinsulinemia. And as now number two, a cause for kidney failure, we mentioned chronic elevated insulin levels, which is hyperinsulinemia. And that causes water retention, that causes uh, kidney problems. So once you get that, you'll get into hypertension, you get into kidney problems. And once you get a kidney problem due to alcohol intake, it is hard for you to reverse hypertension. And you'll realize that most people who take alcohol have a pot belly. They have uh, this ascites because they have a liver failing already. They also have a pancreas failing. Now they have a kidney failing. So that is multiple organ damage. And therefore, death is looming. So start also winning down alcohol in four, all forms. Some of you tell me that spirits or uh, uh, whiskey is better than the beer. But I tell you, the only difference is the percentage of alcohol. Alcohol is alcohol, regardless of the percentage. Okay? And then number seven on the list has to be oxalate consumption. Now, there are so many foods that contain oxalates. And we all know, or if you don't know, get it from me, that kidney stones, the, 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 the major cause of kidney stones, or the major type of kidney stones, are the calcium oxalate stones. Now, most doctors focus on the calcium part. So they tell you to avoid or limit calcium. But nobody's talking about the oxalates because calcium, again, can be combined with phosphorus to just be deposited in bones to give you healthy bones. However, the culprit here is the oxalates. Now, these oxalates are in several foods. The nuts, the cereals, okay, the processed foods, almonds, and all these foods, even soy products, those whey proteins that you consume uh, in the gym to add muscles, they have these oxalates. And therefore, accumulation of these oxalates within a period of time, a long period of time, then will cause you kidney stones. And what will you do? You'll go for the surgery to remove those stones. However, if you easily fix the diet, then you'll get into the prevention. And as we do uh, in this channel, we focus on preventive therapy rather than curative therapy or rather than management of symptoms, we want to deal with the cause. So those are just part of the reasons or the causes of kidney problems. So focus on these problems, get them cleared out of your system, and then definitely you start having a functional uh, kidney. And remember, a functional kidney is very important in your health and survival as a human being. It's a very important organ because of different functions that it plays in the system. Having a functional kidney is mandatory in our survival and in our health. And therefore, the following are the functions of the kidney. And if you focus on preventing the causes of kidney failure that I just mentioned in this video, then you'll have maximization of this function. Number one function of the kidney is fluid balance. So if you balance fluids using the kidneys, then you'll never end up in that edema. You'll never end up in that hypertension. Okay. So if you have a lot of fluid in your system, the kidney reacts by expelling or excreting more salt and more water. And therefore, your fluid balance uh, goes back to normal. Number two is electrolyte balance. Now, all electrolytes, sodium, potassium, calcium, uh, uh, chloride, these are electrolytes that are either reabsorbed or excreted in the kidney to help you have a balance in your system. And therefore, the kidney plays this role. So you can imagine if you have a failing kidney, then you'll start having a defect in potassium, so you'll have heart problems. You'll have a defect in sodium, so you'll have blood pressure problems and muscle problems and even nerve problems. You'll have calcium problems or calcium deficiency, and then you'll have bone problems. Okay, so you can imagine uh, that role again. Number three role is or definitely excretion of toxins in the blood. So the kidney filters blood, and if it filters blood, that means the toxic substances in blood are removed by the kidney. So Things like urea, when they build up in blood, then you might end up even in psychosis. You might end up in liver problems, even hepatic encephalopathy. And therefore, there is a function of the kidney to excrete toxic to uh, products in your system and the waste products of maybe protein uh, metabolism and other functions. But the kidney does not excrete large molecules like protein, large molecules like fat, and even glucose. So if you get protein in urine or you get glucose in urine, then that is a problem.
And that's another advantage also because at least we know that salt can be excreted through the kidneys, through urine and sweat, but glucose cannot be excreted. So once you consume carbohydrates, then you will never excrete it in the body until something happens. Either you convert it into energy uh, by working out or by doing different activities or by fasting. But if you don't, it will never get out of the system. Okay, so take caution of that. Another function of the kidney is basically pH balance. So when you get into acidosis or when you get into alkalosis, the kidney has a way to balance that to take you back to homeostasis and normalcy. Okay, again, uh, in relation to that function, the kidney balances the blood pressure also in, in relation to electrolytes. So it absorbs sodium or excretes sodium depending on the amount of blood or the blood volume so that you get to balance, you don't get into high blood pressure. So of course, if you have a foiling kidney, then definitely you will never be able to control your blood pressures. So they'll always be shooting. And drugs, you'll go to buy those drugs that will help you excrete more water in the kidneys, yet the kidneys are failing. So you're doing them even uh, more injustice. Another function of the kidney then has to be EPO, production of hormones. EPO is erythropoietin. This is a hormone that is involved in instructing the bone marrow to, to produce or the same stem cells in the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. And red blood cells are very important because they are the ones that carry oxygen from one tissue to another in blood. They also carry nutrients. Okay, so you can imagine if if you don't produce, if your kidney is failing, then you don't produce EPO, then you don't produce uh, red blood cells, and then you get into anemia. So anemia related to kidney failure, secondary to kidney failure. Again, another function is vitamin D synthesis. We also we always know that vitamin D comes from the cholesterol in your skin goes into the liver for activation and goes into the kidney for activation. And once that happens, then you now have active vitamin D that will help you boost your immunity. So if you have a, fun a failing kidney, you will have vitamin D deficiency. And therefore, you'll have skin problems, you'll have immune, uh, immune issues and all those related to vitamin D. Okay, those people, those students, those children who have rickets and adults who have osteomalacia, weak bones, is because of failing kidney. Okay, and also the absorption of phosphates and calcium to deposit in the bone, that is a function of the kidney. Now, another function of the kidney is definitely uh, uh, maintenance of homeostasis, production of other hormones. And on top of kidneys, there are adrenal glands that produce different hormones also. So the kidney is very important in your life. So protect your kidney by all means. So if you take care of the causes that I mentioned above, the seven causes that I mentioned above that cause kidney problems, then automatically you'll have a functional kidney. And once you have a functional kidney, then all these functions will go to normal and those deficiency issues that come as a result of kidney failure will disappear. So protect your kidney by all means.